Hello, my dear friends. How are you? I'm Mari Ferger, and today I'm going to talk about the origins of the names of the week. Although, in all honesty, I'm going to have a um, bigger focus on two specific uh, days of the week, uh, which are Friday and Saturday, which seem to be the ones that bring more doubts to their origins. Obviously, I'm going to talk about uh, the names in the English language, as well as Germanic and Old Norse origins, and not the names in other languages. It is often said that most of the names of the days of the week in English derive from either Old German gods and goddesses, or pre-Christian Scandinavian deities. The usual names, such as Tuesday, for instance, let's start from there. Uh, supposedly derived from Tyr, uh, which isn't actually specifically or originally from the Norse god Tyr, but the name Tuesday in Latin was Dais Martis, dedicated to the god Mars, god of war, which was equated with the continental Germanic god Thiwas, or the other way around, Thiwas with Mars. Uh, some pagan Germanic tribes translated uh, the Latin patrons of the days into comparable continental Old German gods. Dais Martis was understood to be Zistag, the day of Zis, from the Proto-Germanic god Thiwas, with the same etymological root as the Greek god Zeus, and in Scandinavia became Tirstag, the equivalent to the Germanic god Thiwas, Thio, Zio, Zis, and so on and so forth. I'll put a note down here concerning this. The cultural phenomenon of naming the days of the week was introduced by the Romans into continental Germanic territories, as we shall see further ahead. So, Mars was equated with Tiwas, or the other way around, Tiwas with Mars. And that's the origins of Tuesday. From Thiwas, which in Old, old English the day was called Thursday, uh, which gave origins to Tuesday. However, Thiwas was introduced in Scandinavia during the migration period. Zio, uh, and the god became Tyr in Old Norse, um, also the god of war, but fused with some unknown solar deity the Scandinavians previously had and of the many cultural and religious traditions that were introduced in Scandinavia during the migration period precisely, uh, the names of the days of the week were one of such traditions. And that's when the Scandinavians started to also have a specific name for Tuesday and dedicated to Tyr. In fact, started to have days and uh, the seven-week calendar in, in their calendar. Not a Scandinavian tradition, but a Roman tradition adopted or rather introduced within continental Germanic traditions who equated their own gods to the very equivalent of the Roman gods. And during the migration period, this tradition of giving names to the days of the week and the seven week um, and the seven week seven days of the week, was finally introduced in Scandinavia. As before the migration period, Scandinavians did not have names for each day. Uh, this is important for you to understand. So you can understand what's coming up next in relation to Friday. And you can perhaps already have more or less the picture here concerning Wednesday from Odin or Odin and Thursday from Thor and Friday from Freya. But this last one, is it truly from Freya? <laughs> well, this is precisely the video to explore that as well. Now, again, what is important for you to understand, uh, to already have in mind uh, before we start this, is that the names of the days of the week are not originally a Germanic invention or even a pre-Christian Scandinavian invention, but in fact a Roman tradition introduced in continental Germanic territories and the old Germans adopted this custom and name, named the days according to their own gods and such gods directly related to the Roman gods to whom each day was specifically dedicated to. I've already, I've already given you the example of Tuesday 
And before we start, uh, just two other examples. Monday is obviously the day of the moon, uh, not particularly because Germanic peoples were worshipping the moon, which in fact in Scandinavia the moon had a particularly important and a mystic religious role, but they did not have a day specifically dedicated to gods and goddesses yet. So they simply did not decide uh, to name this day, specifically Monday, <laughs> in honor to their deity of the moon, but because Monday comes from the Roman day of Dies Lunae, um, precisely the day dedicated to the moon, moon's day, so Monday, which comes from Old English, Monum Day, uh, which is a direct translation from the Roman Dies Lunae. And the same thing precisely happens with Sunday, the day of the sun, from Old English Sunday, uh, which is a direct translation from the Latin name of this day, uh, which was Dies Solise, Sun's Day, the day of the sun. From Roman influence, Anglo-Saxon, Old German and Old Norse started to name their days according to that tradition, that Roman tradition. And Monday and Sunday continue to be associated with the moon and the sun, respectively. The name sun and moon are not from Roman origins, mind that. As the Old Norse, for instance, already called the moon Mani, a male god and not a goddess, and called the sun Sunna, a goddess. But they did not have days dedicated to the gods that is a Roman tradition adopted by old Germans and old Norse people eventually. So Monday is Moon's Day and Sunday is Sun's Day, following the Roman tradition and a direct translation and keeping these two days dedicated to the Moon and the Sun. Again, I repeat, Germanic peoples did not have days specifically dedicated to their gods until the Romans introduced that tradition and so Germanic peoples started to name the days according to the Roman tradition and picking their own gods, their own Germanic gods, equivalent to the Roman gods or, or directly translating or as in the case of Sunday and Monday, day of the sun and day of the moon, Germanic peoples maintained that same line of thought a day for the sun and a day for the moon and the week beginning with the sun and ending with the sun. Even though Germanic peoples had gods and goddesses specifically for the sun and for the moon, they did not name those two specific days after the names of their own gods of the sun and gods of the moon, but simply made a direct translation from Latin. So Sunday and Monday were not specifically dedicated to the Germanic gods of the sun and of the moon, respectively, but simply a translation from Latin to Germanic languages. Ah yes, uh, you are very keen, you have very keen eyes, very observant. Indeed, this is a robe <laughs> that I'm wearing. Uh, I don't know when you are going to see this video, but I have recorded this in late March of 2020. I've been in quarantine for three weeks for eight weeks, actually, a, a, a month due to the coronavirus epidemic. And honestly, I don't care anymore. <laughs> and I feel quite comfortable in this robe. Also, I'm not wearing pants. All right, calm down. <laughs> I'm only joking. Good gods. I almost heard the screams in your heads, shocked by the prospect of a naked herger. Not a pretty sight, I'm afraid, I must admit. Now, enough of silliness. Let's get started. <laughs> so Friday, where is it derived from? Well, uh, as you know, it became common knowledge that the name of this day of the week derives from the Norse goddess Freya. So supposedly it's Freya's day, Friday. But it might not be as simple as that. Please uh, pay close attention because this, this might be a little bit tricky. If indeed the name Friday has its origins in a Germanic pagan past, we should perhaps take a look at the same name, but in German and Swedish, which are the two languages I've chosen here, uh, since they are very similar, concerning the name 
Friday and it's also easier for me to pronounce more or less. In German Friday is Freitag and in Swedish is Frieda uh, and I'll put uh, I'll put it right here so you can better accompany this. Freitag and Frieda, Frieda uh, being a translation of the Roman Dies Veneris, the day of the goddess Venus. And this goddess has been often connected to the Norse goddess Freya. But it may actually be connected to the name of the goddess Frigg, the wife of Odin. Uh, for a very long time, it was believed that Friday derived from Freya, the Norse goddess. Because like the Roman goddess Venus, she is the goddess of love as well. Without a doubt, the need to name the days of the week is from classical influence, as said before, transported to the Germanic cultural world. So a day dedicated to a goddess of love, the Germanic peoples would surely link this day to another goddess of their own and related to love as well. So Freya would be the best candidate. However, Freya is strictly a Scandinavian goddess, a, Scandi uh, a strictly a Scandinavian cultural religious phenomenon, while Frigg has a broader cultural panorama among the old continental Germans. And the custom of naming, the naming of the days don't start in Scandinavia, but in fact it's a cultural influence progressively spreading during the classical period into continental Germanic territories and from there, during the migration period, which roughly started at the beginning of the 4th century of the Common Era and lasting more or less until the late 6th century, many cultural influences reached Scandinavia in that period. The name for Friday came from continental Germanic territory into Scandinavia. So Friday would hardly come from Freya, which is, as I said, strictly a Scandinavian goddess. And as such, it would have derived from Frigg, a continental Germanic goddess, eventually introduced in Scandinavia during the migration period, along with a variety of other cultural phenomena, obviously. So first, the goddess Freya belongs to the Norse mythology, pre-Christian Scandinavian mythology. And cannot thus have been responsible for the English and German words, which, on the other hand, cannot be separated from the Scandinavian forms. And if her name, Freya, indeed had given rise to the Swedish name of this day, it would of course have had the form Freyda and not Frieda. If we look at old Icelandic texts, however, there is indeed the form Freyodagr, from Fr for Friday, which obviously was based on the name of the goddess Freya, but not very much used actually, and without counterparts in the other Nordic Germanic languages. So, in Old Icelandic, Old Icelandic, indeed the name for Friday came from Freya, as her cult was still very important among the first Icelandic settlers, but a name that didn't quite last and had no influence over the other Nordic, Germanic and even Old English languages. So Friday may have derived from the goddess Frigg, indeed, which gave origins to the German Freytag and the Swedish Frieda. Bear it with me. The old Germanic form of the name for Frigg was Freya, or Freya, or even Freya with double I, and the Lombards called her Freya. So you start to see the similarities in the sound for the name Friday and Freytag and, uh, in German and Frieda in Swedish. So the Western Germanic forms of the name of this day, German Freytag, Old High German Freytag, and as well as English Friday, show the same original phonetic state of the name. In Northern Germanic language, the sound combination of double I developed into double G in Scandinavia, 
which corresponds to the name of the goddess, which in Northern Europe, in Scandinavia, developed into Frigg in Old Norse. The name of the day, as it appears in Old Swedish, Old Swedish, and not Modern Swedish, was Thedaha, which shows that it had been imported to the North in its Western Germanic form. In other words, from continental Germanic Europe into Northern Europe. Again, Freya is strictly a Scandinavian goddess and wasn't associated with the, this day of the week, as there were no names for each day of the week in pre-Christian Scandinavia before the migration period. But the continental Germanic goddess Frigg was associated with Friday, coming, from, coming to be associated with the Roman goddess Venus, from which the name for Friday came from, Latin dies veneris. Now, we still have a little problem here. The Roman goddess Venus is a goddess associated with love. So, the Germanic counterpart should also be a goddess associated with love, which is why we automatically think about the Norse Freya, as she was regarded as a goddess of love as well. However, we must take into consideration that Frigg did not exist in Scandinavia before the migration period and is in fact a continental Germanic goddess eventually brought into Scandinavia, which is why Freya, being the strictly the Scandinavian goddess, remained as the goddess of love, while Frigg in Scandinavia became a more shadowy figure, just the wife of Odin, and doesn't have a lot of emphasis uh, in the sources and in mythology, uh, Norse mythology, of, of course, when compared to Freya. But, as we have seen, the name for Friday starts in classical Rome and is introduced in continental Germanic territories. And the Germanic goddess was Freya, who would become Frigg in Scandinavia. Now, Freya was a goddess of love and sex and lust, which is why the old continental Germans associated her with the Roman counterpart Venus. In fact, these attributes of Frigg were not totally lost, as the name in Gothic is Freyon, which means to love, and from Sanskrit, Priya, which means beloved, from Proto-Indo-European Prios, which is beloved, loving, and dear, whereas the name Freya is derived from a completely different stem, a goddess older than Indo-European influences, most likely a goddess from old Iberian Peninsula brought into Scandinavia during the last glacial period. But that doesn't matter now. Also, the love and sex qualities attributed to the Germanic goddess Freya, which would become Frigg in Scandinavia, were not totally lost in Old Norse mythology either. As for instance, we have uh, in the poem Lokasena, the god Loke, who blames Frigg for being man-mad, lustful for man. So there is no doubt that she was an erotic deity and there was eventually an overlapping between Frigg and Freya in Scandinavia. Saturday, from the Roman god Saturnus, Saturnum, a translation from the Latin name of this day, Dies Saturni, the day of Saturn or Saturnus. So there isn't much to say concerning that. It is directly derived from Roman origin. Or is it? <laughs> we shall get to that further ahead. However, it must be noted that there was a name for Saturday, indeed, in Old Norse, which was Laugardagr. Um, it literally meant pool day or bathing day. Uh, notice the word Laugar, and if you remember my video about the meaning of the phrase Arhiwa Lautu Laukar Gakar Aulu Ole Lule Laukar found in the song Othan from the band Heilong. Uh, you can see the video right here. Anyway, you probably remember that Laukar is Laukas, the rune Laukas or Locus, uh, which means water or ocean. So you see the relation here. 
So it's the day to take a bath. And some say it was exclusively a Viking tradition to take a bath on Saturdays. However, it's not strictly a Viking tradition, as in many medieval European countries there was the tradition of a weekly bath, and that was usually on Saturday, to be clean for Sunday. The very concept of a seven-day week was brought to Germanic tribes by Christianized Romans. Now, there has been several attempts to link the Old Norse name for Saturday, Lager Dagr, uh, to a specific Norse deity, such as Loke, uh, which somewhat bears some similarities with Saturn, indeed. But the problem here is that Loke didn't actually play a religious role in the Old Norse society, and no particular worship to him, nor any everyday life activity associated to him. Besides, Logartagr means bathing day, pool day, water day, the day to take a bath, day of washing. If we have to associate Logartagr to a Norse date, if we indeed we must do that, it would have been Lodur, which some associate with Loki indeed, but it's not even certain that the name Lodur refers in fact to Loki. It's possible. Now, it must be pointed out that we have a reference to this day in the form of Lordagr, indeed recorded in Swedish no earlier than 1620, um, so 17th century, which may have derived from Lordagr, uh, which may have come from Lordagr. So it may be possible a development from Lodur to Lord, Lordagr. But I find it unlikely. And Logardagr may be a later development in Old Norse, later when compared to the developments of the other names of the days of the week. Logardagr may in fact have been developed in Christian times. People were still speaking Old Norse when Christianity settled in, in Scandinavia. In fact, many Scandinavians had already come in contact with Christianity, as early as the 6th and 7th centuries. And later on, Viking explorers, pirates, came in contact with Christianity as early as the 8th century and adopted Christianity and uh, incorporated Christ into their pantheon as yet another god among their own gods. Obviously, pre-Christian Scandinavians may well have taken baths and have washed their clothes already in pagan times. <laughs> Obviously, we know that to be true. But the reserving, the specific reserving of the day before the solemn Christian Sunday for procedures of cleaning, cleansing and purification probably was due to the influence of the church. So earlier than the word Laugardagr for Saturday, there may have existed in Northern Europe an older term for this day about which we know nothing. And maybe continental Germans may have had indeed a deity related to Saturday, based on the Roman day for the god Saturn. And brought that day name, day name, <laughs> into Scandinavia in the migration period. As we have seen before, it happened as much with the name for Friday. Uh, but that is completely lost to us, and the Old Norse name for Saturday, Laugardagr, washing day, bathing day, seems to be indeed due to Christian religious influences. Because you didn't take a bath on Sunday, but the day before, Saturday, to clean yourself, to purify, cleanse. So, in the next day you come clean. That's the basic idea. So, as you can see, the Old Norse name for the day of Saturday is quite different, Laugardagr. In fact, it is the only one that seems not to either come from a direct translation from Latin to Old German and then into Proto-Norse and then eventually to Old Norse, or having any relation to a specific Germanic deity equivalent to the Latin deity to this specific day. So, this is another factor that indicates that the name of this day in Old Norse indeed is a later creation due to Christian influences. Now, 
let's forget a little bit about Old Norse for now and again concentrate on the name Saturday. Is it really derived from the Latin day Dies Saturni, the day of Saturn, Saturnum? We know that in the 5th century of the Common Era, the Anglian continental tribes, the Angles, called this day Sedertag. So precisely the end of the Western Roman Empire. So Roman influence had already been deeply rooted in Germanic peoples. However, Sedertag may not be a direct translation from the Latin Dies Saturni, but maybe there is the possibility that it is derived from a Celtic god, the Celtic god Saturn or Saturn, to be more precise. This Celtic god in some northern areas of continental Germanic territories uh, became a god eventually worshipped by the Angles and by the Saxons under the name of Saturn, which was precisely worshipped on the day the Romans worshipped Saturn. I'll put a note right here with the meaning of the name of this specific god along with other things, which seems to be in general a god considered to have uh, evil traits such as the Latin god Saturn. And indeed, the name Sattertag for Saturday was still in use in modern German until the 19th century. So, in the case of Saturday, it may not be a direct translation from Latin to Germanic languages, such as in the case of Monday and Sunday, but again seeking a Germanic god equivalent to the Roman god of this day. This may also be the reason why in Scandinavia the name for Saturday isn't also directly from Germanic influence, because the god Saturn was exclusively first a Celtic god and then a Saxon god, eventually brought not to Scandinavia but to the British Isles. And eventually this day in Old English became Saturn's Day. Now, in terms of Wednesday and Thursday, uh, the days of Odin and Thor, respectively, uh, these are the only ones left to talk about but I will only make a, a quick note on these last ones. Wednesday derives from the Germanic god Woden, that would be specifically worshipped by the Anglo-Saxons, and during the migration period brought into Scandinavia, and Woden, Woden became Odin, as, as you know. Although the name Wednesday is indeed related to Woden, so not strictly coming from the Scandinavian equivalent, the name for the same god, but from the Anglo-Saxon name Woden, which directly derives from the Proto-Germanic Wodenas and the various later Germanic forms for the same name, Woden, Woten, Wolten, Waden, etc. Woden was greatly worshipped by the Anglo-Saxons until at least the 7th century while Odin in Scandinavia did not yet have a great religious focus by this time, as the cult of this god was still quite recent in Scandinavia. So Wednesday is indeed Old English. So as you have noticed, it's not a direct translation from Latin, uh, Wednesday having been called in Latin Dies Mercury, the day of Mercury, but indeed a day dedicated to the Anglo-Saxon god Walden from the Germanic god Wotan and Proto-Germanic god Wodanas. Now, it's curious to see that in other Germanic-speaking regions this day of the week was not dedicated to Woden. It had been before, but the ones that kept this day specifically dedicated to Woden were the Anglo-Saxons, because the early Christian Germans, continental Germans, were offended at the name Walton's Day, which was the day dedicated to Wotan. So they have it changed to a name I'll put in here, because frankly I don't know how to pronounce that, it's pretty weird. And eventually it developed into the modern German Mittwoch, a name which endured until today, meaning middle of the week, or mid-week, the day in the middle. There were several attempts by the various Christian figures to change the names of the week into something else and try to completely forget the pagan gods associated to these days. 
Some were successful, but not all of them. In fact, the Icelandic week is the only example where Christianity succeeded in expelling all the heathen gods from all the names of the days of the week. In terms of Thursday, to finalize this, well, what is to be said? Thursday is from the Old English Thunstag, uh, Thunsday, the day of Thunor, which was the god Thunar to the Old Germans and Thunor to the Anglo-Saxons and translated to Thor in Old Norse. This is the day of thunder and in German it's still called Donnerstag uh, from High Old German Donar, which comes from Thunar, Thunar. <laughs> and around the Germanic cultural world, indeed, it is still today related to this deity. It's quite possible, quite possibly, the only name of a day of the week that we don't have to research a lot because that much was kept. And it is understandable because this deity was one of the most widespread deities all over the Germanic cultural world and very much beloved by all. All right, my dear friends, thank you so much for watching. See you on the next video. I hope you like my robe. <laughs> it's quite comfortable. Anyway, again, thank you very much. I hope this video was useful. See you on the next video. And as always, Dr. Dill.